drag any of these instruments into an empty part of the rack. Let's drag over the subtractor analog synth, the first of our synths, into our rack. And just like you'd expect, any newly created instrument is automatically connected up to our mixer and check it out, it's already been named. Now, if I select this subtractor here, then like you'd expect, you can play this sound from any connected keyboard. And you can see that the note on is reflected here on the graphical interface. Now you can pitch bend or modulate sounds just like you'd expect from the keyboard and you can see any changes you make are reflected in these very cool looking graphics that are on screen. Now just like the Dr. Rex player, remember how we're scrolling through the loops? We can scroll through patches within this subtractor polyphonic synthesizer. So I could be playing a bass sound, then a pad sound, then a symphony. Or just like we did up here when you click on the folder icon, remember we're looking through loops here? Now we're looking through patches and you can audition them straight here within this patch browser. Or just like we saw in the loops, we can browse through folders and we have all of our subtractor patches all neatly organized into folders. So if you wanted to go into say the pads, you can go in here. Perfect. So just like we saw in the Dr. Rex, you just drag it over, select through your loop or your patch in this case, or go through all of them using the browse tool here. Now let's bring over the tool window and let's bring over an instance of the Polysonic Synth Thor. It's a huge synth. Drag that over here and get this out of the way. Great, so now our keyboard is connected to our Polysonic Synth. Now we've hyped up the Thor pretty hard but it looks pretty simple compared to the older Substractor Synth. That's because there is actually a mountain of programming options that have been temporarily hidden from us. Click on the show programmer and wow, that's a lot of synth. Right now, if this rack was in the real world with a, a mixer and three rack mount modules in it, it'd probably be about three or four feet tall. If we could continue to drop in devices and also multiple instances of those devices, our rack is going to get very, very tall. It's going to be taller than the shack. To help us actually clean things up a little bit, we can toggle these devices between showing all their inner workings or just down to the bare essentials to conserve rack space. Take Thor for example. This sound will play whether we show our programmer or not. So if you want to conserve a little real estate, just hide the programmer right here. Or maybe you want to darken up the sound and close up the filter. We could show the programmer. I could close the filter. And then close that programmer back up to conserve a little bit of real estate. Now you can then minimize these devices even further. Just click on the little arrow icons here that you see all over all of these devices and you can minimize it down to an area where it just shows you the note on, for example, and you can scroll through the patches. We could do the same thing with a subtractor and also the Dr. Rex. You can even do that with the mixer. Now let's open up the mixer again and let's drag over the Maelstrom. Where is it? Right here, the grain table synthesizer. Very, very cool. You can do the same thing just like we've seen before. Scroll through the patches or browse through the patches. Exactly the same thing that we've seen in the Thor and the Subtractor. So we have three synths to choose from. Subtractor, Thor and Maelstrom. Subtractor is based on the early synths like uh, say the Moogs, Prophets and so on that use subtractive synthesis. Subtractive synthesis is where you start out with a basic waveform like say 